Welcome back to What's Next Garage. Today we're working on repairing an oil leak on the wheel horse rototiller. Stick around, here we go. We've got a leak down here, and it's really a pretty good leak because it's just been here a little while and I've got that much oil on the ground. We will take this cover off and then see what we got going on. I actually found my set of square drivers. Let's see if one of these will work. Look at that, right on. <laughs> I'm lucky. Kind of. Did it look like it moved? Oh yeah, I think it's moving. Every inch of the way it went off hard. Every inch of the way. That's the uh, wheel horse rototiller gearbox. The one drawback of a rototiller is when all of the tall grass gets wound up around the shaft of the rototiller tines. Can take a little while to dig it all out. Well, that's good that that fell out. So what these pins do is these pins allow me to either add or subtract uh, rototiller width, I think. We're gonna see. That's two. Oh wow, look at them. They aren't gonna fall out of there. So this one might be a little bit more difficult because I don't have a lot to keep it held on. Yeah, it's moving like the littlest of little bits. She is really, uh, really being stubborn, I'll tell you that. But we're not gonna lose. No way. It's gotta come out of there sometime. <sighs> Thank you, dope. Holy macaroni. Yeah, we'll put some more heat to her for a little bit. Old timer said, kid. He said, kid. You're gonna get arthritis in that hand from hitting it with a hammer. Yeah, that old man was right. They usually are. Okay, I can see the bottom of that pipe, so we're doing good. Hey. 
Oh. Ha, ha, ha. Ouch. 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 Pay attention. We're almost there. We're going to win. Wow, I kind of lost my concentration. <laughs> there, 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 there. Oh well, that'll be all right. We'll live. It's always fun taking apart a gearbox like this. It's pretty neat. We really don't have to do this because you really can't get it messed up. But if you're gonna be working on gearboxes and stuff, you should make a habit of making sure you match your cover match market and so we're just gonna punch it and punch it I am I, I I'll tell you what if this is what I think it is this has got to be one of the most durable durable things I've ever well, I've seen some pretty durable stuff, so I can't say that. But it's gonna be pretty cool. Here we go, we're gonna crack this thing. That'll be a good start to that. Get that gear out of there. Okay. That's a very husky chain. We just need to polish this up a little so it comes out, it comes out okay. I will link a separate video in the description below of me making this gasket with more detail. Okay, now we're gonna polish this up. Okay, rag and roast. And I'm not clamping it down really tight, it's just getting a little bit of tension on it. This is a pretty simple yet stout gearbox. We have the input shaft, then the intermediate shaft, which has the gear, the large gear and sprocket on it, and then the output shaft, or the low speed shaft, which is actually attached to the sprocket and then that runs out to the tines. So here's the seal we have to install. The shaft is one inch 245 approximately, probably one inch 250. I got a problem on this one side here. So this is uh, 242. So I have to open this up a little bit. So we're just taking a skin cut where we know the diameter is good. And then we'll take the larger cut in the back. That way we'll have a consistency across the whole bore. Okay. 
That is that. That's all we needed. This green is, the green on here is actually a sealant. I'm just adding a little extra. And we're gonna do the same thing with the Permatex here. We're good there. We're nice and square. Then I would say that seal is good. So when you do these, you just gotta make sure that this is deburred so you don't cut your seal on the way down. I often tend to spin it so it goes down nice and, uh, nice and even without catching on anything. So we're putting in 85-140, some pretty heavy lube. It's always a good idea to deburr the key seat to allow the pulley to go on easier. This is what they call payback. This is my kid's battery. My battery's dead. It's my turn to take something from them. We are back in business. I put a new fuel pump on it because it was leaking. And here's why that motor runs so good. Because it is a Kohler cast iron line, it is a long life. So, it's a very good system. Well, that's it. We got it done with the wheel horse today. We got this food plot rotor tilt up. We got that food plot rotor tilt up. Then on the back side of the pond, actually around the pond, we will do beets and turnips here as well. Now that I finally got the wheel horse rototiller project done, which was supposed to be done this winter, wait, last winter, I definitely can give my back and arms a rest. I won't have to use that simplicity front tine rototiller anymore. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any more upcoming videos. And as always, have a great day. These rototiller has been sitting out for about a week. That stain on the floor is what I got over the winter. That's all cleaned up. He's looking pretty dry.